thinking like why did I build this observatory so yes definitely obvious reason reduces the setup time you can spend time quality time with your family and kids and all that another big reason is whenever I bring my scope and my uh, equipment I'm finding like new issue the next day I was supposed to work on the new thing but the old thing stops working like some problem so I have to keep, you know, spending a lot more time to get where I was and then try the new one. So that was the main reason. I want to make sure that at least I am where I was last night and then, you know, make changes that I need. In the old house I was, uh, they had a HOA, like Homeowners Association, and they didn't let me build anything like the way I'm, I built here. So I have to like pay enormous amount to, you know, work with the code that they have and all that. So here it's a bit relaxed. So I was able to build this one. I was debating between the roll off observatory versus the sky shed part. I think both are good. I think the sky shed part is actually cheaper than this one. And uh, for me, I was thinking more like I can see more sky uh, right away around me if I have a roll-off roof. Now, in case of sky shed pod, I thought it was limited, but they have both advantages. Uh, the only thing was here, the walls are a bit higher, so you need a tall pier and put the telescope on top of it and then make the telescope like flat when you are closing the roof. There are a lot of people are asking about, can this work remote? I don't know, it's going to be very, very complex if we need to try working this remotely. There are some designs out there that people uh, can buy and there are some designs for the automation as well. I'm getting used to the setup here. The roof is a bit heavier than I thought. I think those big wheels, the commercial grade ones, they are definitely helping. Uh, so I'll put all my experiences and I'll try to summarize them once I get a little bit more comfortable with this setup here. So let's talk about the object that I wanted to take. I can only spend like maybe three or four hours tonight. So I wanted to take a picture of the Wizard Nebula. So I started researching on the Wizard Nebula, where it is located. So it is located in Cepheus constellation. So they call this Cepheus constellation as a circumpolar constellation. What that means is it actually moves around Polaris. So any time of the day or the night, it's there somewhere around the Polaris. So it depends on where you are located on the Earth, chances are you might be seeing that all the time. The intriguing part is it has a quasar inside that constellation and then that quasar has a huge black hole and it is one of the largest black holes that are recorded in the history. So, and it is right there, 8,500 light years from us. The location is also another intriguing part. It is located on the fourth arm of our Milky Way. We are on the third one. So think of like you are looking at this one and you are looking at the other arm of our Milky Way. So when you are looking at the Milky Way that we see in the night time, that is the middle of or the core of the Milky Way. Whereas when you are looking towards the Polaris side, you are looking at the Perseus arm where this Cepheus constellation is located. So it's an interstellar gas. I'll try to take a picture 